I want to play Rick for you if I, if we can here. This is, the president talked a little bit about China. Doesn't want to make them an enemy. Obviously, the way he's approaching it makes them a competitor. Take a listen to number one hundred four. Winning the competition should unite all of us. We face serious challenges across the world, but in the past two years, democracies have become stronger, not weaker. Autocracy has grown weaker, not stronger. Name me a world leader who changed places with Xi Jinping. Name me one. Name me one. What is he, t Rick? First of all, winning the competition with China should unite all of us. But what is he talking about in the rest of this? You know, I listened to him three or four times, kept replaying that. I have no idea what he is saying. It, it doesn't make any sense. You know, when you watched his speech, though, he couldn't even read the, the teleprompter. He was stumbling over words. It was so embarrassing. And guess what? We're not the only Americans are not the only ones who are noticing that Joe Biden cannot read his speech. Uh, world leaders like she uh, we, we've got enemies, we've got friends and others who are all watching him stumble through his State of the Union speech. And it's not good. So, Rick, let me I am I'm really trying to figure this out. OK, what is the man possibly talking about? This is what he says. Name and he's screaming this. Name me one world leader who switched places with Xi Jinping. Name me one. What, do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, Rick, you could go 50 or 60 uh, a much smaller level dictators would be happy to be a, a dictator like that over 1.3 billion people with the military they have. Oh, that's Erdogan. Yeah, I he, may, he might want to switch places with Erdogan. I'll give you one. Uh, Bashir. That's not yeah. I mean, just to take that kind of power. Yes. And military strength. So, I mean, Rick, someone's prepping this, right? I mean, someone's writing this stuff. And it's, you know, I, we previously said, and it's true, It's and you've said it, these are like 23-year-olds running the foreign policy of the United States. But Putin would like to have Russia's military. Yeah. Uh, China's military right now. Yeah. Rick? Yeah, look, I think the reality is, is that he misread that line. The way that he said it does not make any sense. Of course, you know, China is a world power, and there's a lot of people that would want to you know, switch places with she. That's like saying, who wouldn't want to be, be Tom kind. Brady? You're being kind. I'll chalk it up to we misread the line. Because that makes me feel like it's not as bad as I thought it was. But wh what would the line have I'm trying to I have no idea. Because he, he wanted to scream. He screamed it. tough. Act tough. If that was his shot at G, I mean, he's, he, I know the guy doesn't laugh very much, at least on camera. I bet he did laugh. I don't, yeah. Rick, last, last question here, Rick, uh, on, on overall, um, you, if you look at China, you look at the border, you look at what the spy satellite that came across, you look at inflation. The state of the uh, the state of the union is, is is fragile, in my view. Yeah, look, I'm still puzzled as to uh, why the speech wasn't filled with more foreign policy yeah. and, and global leadership. Why we didn't mention Turkey or Syria? Turkey is a NATO ally since 1952, and yet. The president of the United States didn't mention the devastating earthquake. More than 11,000 people have been killed. Uh, he didn't even mention it. And, and you know, it's, it's impossible to understand how they put together a speech and didn't see the news in Turkey and Syria. You know, it's interesting to me because the world has united to help Turkey and Syria through the situation. I, I don't have this confirmed. But I was talking to friends of mine that do a lot of work in Israel and that the um, Israeli government, had provided um, relief efforts and humanitarian aid, medical care, um, big numbers, devices to help locate people, and not a mention, Rick, not a mention in the speech. Not one, one, one sentence. We're the world's leader when it comes to search and rescue. Israel is right there as well. The Americans and the Israelis are there trying to find individuals who are trapped. Uh, this was a golden opportunity to stand up for a NATO ally. Instead of standing up for a NATO ally, he spent more time on Ukraine once again. And we don't have a treaty with Ukraine. We have a NATO obligation to Turkey. And I know we can have a long uh, discussion about Erdogan and what's happening in Turkey. But since 1952, Turkey's been a member of NATO. We better be uh, there for NATO allies. And it seems like this would be a good opportunity maybe to help that relationship and repair it by Perfect. showing goodwill. That's what I was saying. I don't. The, the miscues here on a global scale are incredible. By the way, Turkey, ACLJ has been involved. So, I mean, Israel, of course, we have an office in Jerusalem. This gives you an idea of the scope of nature of what we do. A, a website to support? Of course. Something like that. that <laughs> again, that the Red Cross. Try and rebuild I mean, the relationship 
uh, with 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 a NATO Hardly, alley that's been tough. And it's a horrible tragedy, Rick. We appreciate it.